conversation. Let's bring into this conversation Democratic Congressman Tim Ryan of Ohio. Yesterday, he ended his bid to become president of the United States. Congressman, it's great to see you. Uh, walk us through, if you would, your decision-making process here. Uh, you got into the race hopeful coming from Ohio. You had a good message to sell to people who were disillusioned with the way the country was headed, some of whom may have voted for Donald Trump. Why would you decide to end your run? Well, I ran out of money. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty simple. I mean, I think we we ran a good campaign. I think we had a good message. We were on the ground in some early states like New Hampshire and South Carolina, really connecting with voters. But the way the the you know the uh, debate system was set up, you know, it didn't. I don't think it it helps a dark horse like me because people were only given money if you were on the debate stage. And so, in my opinion, it interrupted a lot of the natural flow of a campaign. Uh, but we got the message out. I think, you know, it's important that we recognize what Steve was just saying, that there are a lot of people in this country who are forgotten, who are left behind. And I think President Trump's really running into a problem here. He's touting this economy like it's really going well. But that comes up against people's pocketbook and their everyday reality. And we need to expose that and have a plan for them moving into the future. That's how we can beat this guy. So let's talk, Congressman, about what's going on in Youngstown, Ohio, in your district. When you talk to people there, maybe some of whom, as I said, did vote for Donald Trump after voting for Barack Obama once or twice. What are they feeling right now when you're on the ground talking to them? Well, we lost the General Motors plan here that had close to 4,000 workers when President Trump got inaugurated, and that entire plant is gone now. Those were the best-paying jobs in the Mahoning Valley. We're halfway between Cleveland and Pittsburgh on the eastern part uh, of the state of Ohio. And, and those jobs are gone. They were 30 bucks an hour, good benefits, nice retirement. And so the ripple effect from those jobs throughout the community is still uh, being felt. And, and so I think a lot of people are turned off. President Trump really didn't weigh in at all. He was here a couple years ago telling everybody not to sell their home. He was going to bring these jobs back. And we lost the best jobs in the community. And look, I can't blame President Trump for everything. He didn't create all these problems, globalization, automation, all the structural things we're dealing with. But he has absolutely no plan as to what's next in the United States to help rebuild the middle class. And so I think these voters are starting to look at the complete chaos, not that they're immersed in it like we are every single day with impeachment and Russia and all this stuff, but they're watching the chaos in Washington and they're watching their standard of living stay the same or get worse. And so that's the opening, I think, for the for the Democratic nominee to expose Trump on this. And I think we can put Ohio back in play, quite frankly. And, and that would be a, a big issue for President Trump to have to deal with, not just Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin, but also Ohio. Ref. Congressman Ryan, uh, first, let me say I think you hey, ran Ref. a great campaign. And uh, I got to know you. I think your voice is uh, certainly needed. On that issue, don't you think the Democrats... Uh, need to focus in on exactly what you just said was going on in Youngstown with the GM plant, exactly what Steve Ratner's uh, graph show is. That is, forget the hype. You know, we keep talking about Trump shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue. He's got a Broadway act. Yeah. He's conning <laughs> us. He's telling us that we're doing better than we are and that the Democrats ought to have people focus on, are you really doing better than you were doing two and a half years ago? Look at the facts. Isn't right. that the message your campaign tried to come with and the message that they need to zero in on to compare the facts to the con game that Donald Trump is playing on everyone? Yeah, exactly. And you can't get, we can't heal you know, the economy. You can't improve and rebuild the middle class in a divided country. And so the message has got to be, look, we have to work with the business community. Look, we have to work with closing the skills gap. There are good jobs out there, but we also have to get people trained up. We've got to invest in the education and infrastructure, like the bread and butter stuff. And people are struggling with health care, prescription drugs, pensions. I mean, this is bread and butter politics. We've got to be talking about what's on the minds of the people uh, in, in the United States. And we can't get distracted by the sideshow. And, and if we're going to win this thing, I think it's going to be the economic argument. It's going to be talking about an aspirational agenda for people in this country, how we can help them, how we can make their lives better. You know, and I know there's a lot of talk about revolutions and all of this. 
the revolution is getting Donald Trump out of the White House. That in and of itself will be a revolution in the United States. You know, the worst thing we could do for the environment is to have Donald Trump as president for the next four years. So the focus has got to be, how do we beat this guy? Who's the best candidate for us to beat Donald Trump? And all of these other problems will, will move aside because we can start healing the country and fixing it. But it's got to be the bread and butter stuff that you mentioned. Richard Haas. Congressman, uh, in the last couple of days, you've had uh, a lot of us concerned about what's going on in the Middle East. Just yesterday, the vice president gave the, the most comprehensive speech on U.S.-China relations that we've heard from this administration for, for a year. Uh, there's you know, all sorts of issues about Russia, you name it. To what extent did you find that when you, you were talking to the voters that any of that clicked, that there was any resonance with those issues, that they understood that what was happening in the world would have trem tremendous implications for people in your state, and that what was happening in the world, the deterioration, was, was something very much not in their interest. Uh, was, there any, was there any connection on this, any interest in it? Yeah, first let me say, Richard, I just finished your book up, and it, it was amazing, and I, I really enjoyed it, and I think it outlines and illustrates exactly what's happening in the world and how complicated it is and how the United States has to take a big role. And I think people on the ground uh, understand this in the context of China uh, because of the competition, because China is really symbolic of globalization. They're symbolic of automation. They're symbolic of a country who's coming after us to clean our clock economically. They're making the big investments into the Belt Road Initiative, into the Make It in China 2025, investments in the additive manufacturing and, and AI and all of these future-oriented technologies while the United States is sitting on our hands. And that's, that's, I think, the opening, is to create this. And I've given speeches about this all over the country, about what China is doing, the investments they're making, and how they have a 10-year plan, a 20-year plan, a 50-year plan, and a 100-year plan. And in Donald Trump's America, we're living in a 24-hour news cycle. And guess who wins that game? The people that play the long game. And they have an industrial policy, they have a techno technology policy, they have an infrastructure policy, they tie their investments into STEM and education and research into the goals of, the, of building out those technologies. So they have a very comprehensive agenda. And I think people on the ground understand that. I don't think they understand the details of it, but they know China is coming after us. You know, we see them dumping steel and dumping products into our country. But there's no plan on our side. And again, I think that's the opening. People want to know. I think this election is going to be a lot like 92. And, and James Carville used to say, you got to explain it to them. You know, we've got to explain to the American people what the plan is to reorient our economy and to rebuild the middle class. So they have an understanding, not in detail, but definitely with the competition against China. Congressman, you said a minute ago the objective for Democrats should be to pick the candidate who has the best chance to beat Donald Trump. I think a lot of Democrats agree with you on that. A lot of people watching this show probably yeah. agree with you yeah. on that. They respect your voice. You've been inside the process. Is there a candidate you believe has the best chance to beat Donald Trump? Uh, yeah, he just got out of the race, Willie. <laughs> <laughs> With the exception uh, of yourself, I, I, I'm going <laughs> I'm I'm to be looking at all the candidates. Obviously, I know them really well, and uh, you know, I, I, I will be weighing in. I think at some point here, pretty soon. But we're going to catch our breath and and make a decision here in the near future. All right, Congressman Tim Ryan, I echo what Reverend Sharpton said. Your voice is needed in this conversation. You come from a place and you understand these problems better than a lot of people. Good for you for running for president, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Thanks, Willie. Take care. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube, and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories, and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.